Insert disc two. Hey everybody, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the latest console on ARG Presents, the Game Boy Advance. This is sort of my love letter to the console. Uh, it is um, probably uh, in my top three consoles of all time, and it's definitely the number one for me as far as handhelds go. Um, the Game Boy Advance was a revelation when it came out because it was so further ahead uh, than everything else that had come before it uh, in so many ways. Um, I went from having a normal Game Boy to uh, a Game Gear for a while and then nothing. And, uh, and then I picked up, actually, it's kind of a funny story, um, my girlfriend at the time, Stealth, bought me a, an original GBA uh, for Christmas uh, one year, and uh, I, uh, I took it out, and actually, you know, that, that's not true. I'm about ready to commit a falsehood, because she actually bought me the, I got the original, let's see, is that, yeah, I guess the original DS, I got mixed up with the DS and the, uh, the GBA, so anyway, forget about that. Um, because that was, anyway, I'll tell that story on my uh, DS memories uh, uh, little thingy. But anyway, the GBA, I, I first played a GBA and I thought it was total garbage because it was one of the original models with the um, non-backlit screen. Um, I didn't think that, uh, that the, the fact that it was powered by a, uh, I think a single battery, I, I, to me that didn't, it didn't outweigh the fact that you, you, you just couldn't see the thing. And unlike the Game Boy, the original Game Boy, which also was not backlit in the United States, um, the games were, were not designed for easy visibility a lot of the time. A lot of the games were just super, super dark uh, because of the color palette that you could use on the GBA. Uh, you you got all these different shades, uh, and um, and it was just it just it wasn't a, a pleasant experience to play it, and so um, I I put it away. Uh, you know I, I I never had one. I just remember fooling around with one. Um, but what caught my eye was um, you know I was I was working. It was the, the the year that I got a GBA was the year I had my first real job teaching. It was in the. Uh, probably in the fall of 2003 or the spring of 2004. And the Game Boy had been out for a couple of years and they'd released a new Game Boy Advance called the, uh, the Game Boy, uh, the GBA SP. Um, and this was a total departure from all of the Game Boys up to this point um, for a number of reasons and it, it leads me to why this thing was the best. Uh, number one, uh, the Game Boy Advance SP was backlit, so no more like trying to like fool around trying to find the perfect angle to play your games. Uh, you could play your games anywhere from total darkness to direct sunlight, and it was fine. Huge, huge deal because you could actually see the games as they were meant to be seen. Um, the second thing was that it folded into a very compact, I think it was almost a perfect square. So when it unfolded, you know, it was, it was, you know, the flip phone and everything was out at this point, of course. But, you know, it, it was a clamshell design. But when it folded in half, you know, it, 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 it protected the insides. You didn't have to worry about buttons rubbing in your pocket or anything like that. And you could just slide it right into your pocket and it literally fit in any, any guy's, at least, pants pocket. Which was a huge thing because there was, I mean, maybe if you had a Game Boy pocket, you could slide it, you could slide it in there. Um, but uh, as far as the, the, the original Game Boy or the Game Boy Advance original, you couldn't do that. So that was a huge deal to me because at the time, you know, I would, I would play, you know, during down moments wherever I was. The third thing, and you can't undersell this, um, is that the GBA had a lithium-ion battery. This was the first portable uh, console, first portable uh, really anything other than a phone that I ever had that had a lithium ion battery, a chargeable battery. And the fact that you no longer had to worry about running out of batteries or keeping a stash of batteries with you. You could plug this thing into your wall and charge it up. And once it did have a charge, you know, it would last. 
maybe it didn't last as long as the non-backlit GBA, but it really lasted a long time. So those three things, you know, the backlight, the, back the clamshell design, and the fact that it had a chargeable lithium ion battery made this thing unbeatable uh, in terms of the actual system itself. But what about the games? So the, the games were perfect for someone who felt left behind by the 3D era in gaming that had sort of taken over by this point. Really, it had totally taken over by this point, the early 2000s. Um, you know, you, all of the consoles at this point had gone full 3D, and they, they, all of the great 2D franchises that I loved had kind of been left in the dust. And uh, the the Game Boy Advance also it seemed like it it existed in this parallel universe where uh, it uh, two D games never died. You know, they just kept going in that in that that same vein. And you got all of the benefits of you know all the aesthetic beauty of the you know pixel art two D games. But a lot of the uh, modern day conveniences like, you know, saving systems, uh, battery backup, um, more RPG elements in games. Um, so it was, it was the best of both worlds and it was really a golden era for me in terms of the, you know, just some of the best experiences that I've had as, as a person into video games, uh, you know, was through the GBA. I remember buying the GBA SP. Uh, this thing was the um, the NES Classic model. Another thing that drew me to purchasing this was when I found out that they they were releasing a a model with the colors and the styling of the original Nintendo. It really really looked sharp when you opened it up. It had that kind of gray and black lined feel to it with a splash of red, just like the uh, the original NES. Uh, I remember going to a game, I think it was probably a Toys R Us when I was living in Maryland, and uh, buying the the Game Boy itself. Um, I bought Advance Wars 2 and Mario vs. Donkey Kong. And I just remember, you know, tearing it out of the packaging, uh, popping it into the, you know, I didn't even wait till I got home. I, I got it out in the car, you know, I fired it up. And I was blown away by the, the graphical fidelity of this thing. And uh, another thing that was great about the um, the GBA was that it was fully backwards compatible all the way back to the original Game Boy. So not only do you have a system that is continuing forth this great lineage of 16-bit kind of 2D games, but you also can reach all the way back to the beginning of the Game Boy's catalog and now you have a backlit system to play these games on. It's incredible. Um, so, you know, I bought those two games. Mario vs. Donkey Kong is a, uh, a really, really great puzzle platformer. Uh, if you play Donkey Kong 2, I believe, on the Game Boy, it's very similar to that. But at that point, I had no idea that that existed. And I thought this was a brand new game type. Uh, and uh, Advance Wars, of course, is the tactical uh, strategy game that's, uh, you know, pretty lightweight as far as those games go. But uh, really, really fun. And a lot of a lot of character in it, so I bought those two, and then for the first time I went back into the the Game Boy Color library because I didn't have any of those games, and I played the uh, Zelda Oracle of the Seasons, and that was fantastic. Um, and as we as I moved along through through time, uh, I you know I I probably had that thing for a year or two before it uh, it finally I, I seeded that. And, and got a, uh, a DS Lite, which uh, was, was really, really great too because it had backwards compatibility with the, with the Game Boy Advance library. However, it lost the backwards compatibility with the entire Game Boy library, which was a shame. Although it would look, you know, it already looked slightly ridiculous having a huge Game Boy cart sticking out of the bottom of the, uh, the GBA. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to share with you my memories of the Game Boy Advance and why I think it's such an awesome system. And if you get a chance to pick, uh, especially a GBA SP, I think it's the 101, which is the second model. It has a much improved backlight. Um, and uh, and it's, it's still a really, really fun system to play to this day. It's, it's still super compact. Um, and the games, because of uh, they are, they're pretty cheap to pick up, unfortunately, one of the things that's happened with the GBA is uh, it was very easy to pirate cartridges. So whenever you're buying games on eBay, you can sort of 
just buy them with the understanding that they might not be real. Um, and even the you know these things invaded GameStop and they, they they really permeated throughout all of gaming. So it's really hard to tell real cartridges from fake cartridges. But at the same time, the GBA was also the first Nintendo portable system that had a flash cart developed for it. Uh, that may be a lie. That was it was the first one I heard about at least. But anyway, um, check that out, um, and you can load that thing up with all kinds of emulators and things and, and have fun with it, too. Um, but anyway, that is uh, just a little, a little rambling on uh, the GBA. Uh, thanks for watching. See you later. Adios.